There are a bunch of old, outdated, and obsolete commands that PTC has removed from the Creo parametric interface, but some of them are actually kind of useful, and some of them you can actually bring back using config.pro options. So I want to show you some of the config.pro options that you can use to re-expose old commands and how to add them to the Creo parametric interface and how to use a few of them. So first off, if I go to File and then Options and Configuration Editor, two config.pro options that bring back some of these obsolete commands are Allow Anatomic Features, which gives you access to some old Pro Engineer commands like Ear, Neck, and Lip. And another one, if I scroll down, Enable Obsoleted Features. And this will give you the General Blend, blend between surfaces, conic and n-sided surfaces, and a few other ones. And when you set them to yes, it's not like they'll be back in the interface. You'll actually have to place them there for you. So if I go to the ribbon command in the Creo Parametric Options dialog box, there is a common tab that you can use to place commands. So for example, the map keys command doesn't appear in the interface by default. So I have exposed that in the command group that I call commands, and I've created a second command group for anatomic features and a third group for obsoleted features based on the config.pro options. And you can see that allow anatomic features brings back about nine different commands, lip, ear, neck, slot, flange, shaft, local push, radius dome, and section dome. And later on, I might create a video to show you local push because that one is kind of interesting. And the config.pro option enable obsoleted features brings back conic surface and n-sided patch. I'll show you an n-sided patch, general blend, blend section to surfaces, pipe, Project Section Blend, Solid Freeform, and Surface Freeform, which you can actually achieve through the Warp command, and Blend Between Surfaces. And so by using that common tab, I have access to these uh, old commands that PTC removed. All right, I'm going to cancel out of the Options dialog box. And let's take a look at the first command, Blend Between Surfaces. And in this part model, I have a couple of spheres, and I want to sort of fill in the geometry in between them. So I can go to the Blend Between Surfaces command. I'm going to create a protrusion to add material. You could use a cut to remove material or do a surface to make a non-solid feature. But I want to add material. And here in the right side of the computer screen, we get the old interface from the Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier days. This is called a model dialog box. And it's asking me to select the first surface I want to use and then the second surface. And in the old interface, you didn't get a preview until you clicked the preview button. And here you can see I'm just sort of seeing how it's going to drape between the two. I will click OK, and I have a protrusion feature in the model. If I go to the View tab, let's try a section in the Y direction. Oops, wrong one. No problem. I can go to the drop down and choose the X direction. And there you see the solid geometry that is being created from one sphere to the other. So I'm not going to create a section. Let me cancel out of there. And that is the Blend Between Surfaces command. Let's switch over to another window, and here I have a surface that was patterned, and I want to create a surface that sort of like fills in this area inside of there, and it's not planar, so I can't use the fill command like I showed in another video. Here I can use what's called an n-sided patch. When I click on the command, you get a menu manager, also old legacy interface. You can choose if you want to create a conic surface, an approximate blend, or what in this case, an n-sided surface. And then you click done. And now again, we get the model dialog box and it wants to know what curves I want to use to define the boundary. So I'm just going to use the control key to select these non-tangent curves. If I remember correctly, an n-sided surface requires at least five boundaries. And this is usually used in a situation where, again, you can't use the fill command or you can't use a boundary blend. And in ISDX, you can achieve this same thing, but some people don't have the ISDX uh, license, so they can't do it in there. 
and let me click OK. And there you can see I have a surface. I don't really get controls over the shape of the geometry, but it did exactly what I wanted to do. It, want, it filled in that gap between those different edges. For the third command, let me hop over to an assembly model, and from the command, the common tab, uh, there is something called a lip feature. It's one of the few anatomic features I find really, really useful, and that's if you're trying to define the boundary interface between a couple components uh, with, like the name implies, lips. And so in order to create them, I'm going to first select, let's start with the bottom part and I'll use the activate command. So it's sort of like I'm in part mode, except I've got the assembly open. Now I will go to the common tab and then click on the lip command. And now it's asked me to select one or more edges. I'm reading the graphic, the uh, message area at the bottom of the screen. Select one or more adjacent edges to form the lip feature. And rather than pick them one by one, I'm going to choose chain and I'll pick one edge and it automatically selects the chain of edges around there. Let's click OK and done. And now it's asked me to select the surface to be offset. And so I'm going to select this surface. Now in this small window it's asked me enter the offset value. So that is the height of the lip that I want to create. I'm going to make this one a tenth of an inch. And now it's asked me the distance from the edges that I want to create the draft surface. And I want that to be right in the middle. And I happen to know that the width of that surface is a quarter inch. So I'm going to use an eighth of an inch. And then it asks me for the reference plane for the draft. I'll select this surface over here and the draft angle. And I'm going to make a really big draft angle so that you're capable of seeing it. Let's use 30 degrees of draft. And so let me hit the repaint button, stuff is still highlighted. And so hopefully you can see that it created a little lip around there and it's actually interfering with the top part. So let's create the same thing in the top part, except I'm going to use a negative value for the depth and now create the complementary feature to the lip on the bottom part. So select the bottom part from the mini toolbar. I will use activate. And let's click the lip command again. And it's asked me for the edges. Let's use chain. And I'll select one edge. And it selects the loop around there. I want to show you a little shortcut with the old interface with the model dialog boxes and the menu managers and all those get select menus. If you want to click OK, you can usually use the middle mouse button. You'll notice in the menu manager, done is highlighted in bold and if I hit the middle mouse button I'll grab that one as well. Now in the message area it's asked me this to select the surface to be offset. I'm going to have to query to it and the offset value. Last time I entered positive 0.1 this time I'm going to enter a negative 0.1 and the offset from the edge for the draft surface. Again this is a quarter inch wide and I want to put it in the middle so I'm going to use an eighth of an inch and the reference plane for the draft. I'm querying select to the same surface and the draft angle 30 degrees. And so it's created the complementary feature. I know it's really hard to see that. So let's go back to the view tab and, oh, let me activate the assembly. And then from the model tab, I can access the section command. Let's try a section in the Y direction. Oops, wrong one. Keep on guessing wrong. Let's try the X direction and let's show some cross hatching. And now when I zoom in, you can see how these two features, uh, these two parts have an interface between them with the lip feature. And be aware with the lip feature, you're actually not able to edit definition of it, but you can edit the different dimensions. Let me hit the check mark to get out of here and activate this. If I click on the lip feature, uh, there is an edit command. If I click edit definition, you'll get, hey, cannot redefine this uh, feature. Select again. But you can edit the different dimensions. Just be aware that the dimensions are not connected between models. So 
if you change one, you're going to have to manually change the other. But again, it's a nice little feature. And all these features are, are good commands to have in your back pocket for special situations. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.